In this lesson, we're going to learn about translating or shifting functions. This video is a follow-up to an earlier lesson on the vertex or shifted form of a parabola. If you haven't already watched that lesson, I suggest that you watch that first, or if you need to review, that's a good place to begin. With that in mind, let's get started. We're going to begin with the parent functions. A parent function is the simplest function within a family of functions. For example, we learned previously that the parent function for the quadratic is y equals x squared, and its graph is that of a parabola. There are several other functions that we're going to look at in this lesson, including the square root function, the cubic function, the cube root function, and the absolute value function. It turns out if you're comfortable already with how to shift the quadratic function left, right, up, and down, the behavior is exactly the same for the rest of them. Let's see how that works. Here we have our five parent functions. And here, in the bottom, we're going to do a shift. Suppose we take the quadratic function y equals x squared and we change it to y equals x squared plus 2. That plus 2 shifts the parabola up 2 units. All of the others work exactly the same. If I take the square root function and change that to y equals the square root of x plus 2, the square root function is shifted up 2 units. Similarly, if I look at the cubic function, y equals x to the third, and I add 2, the cubic function shifts up two spaces. The same is true for the cube root and for the absolute value. All functions behave the same. And so, if we want to shift a function up two units, we simply add that number to the end of the function. The same is true if we want to shift a function down. Instead of adding a number, we will subtract a number. So y equals x squared minus 3 will shift the parabola down 3 units. Square root function y equals the square root of x minus 3 will shift the square root function down 3 units. The same is true for the cubic, the cube root, and the absolute value. If you want to shift a function downward, simply subtract that constant number from the end of the function. Shifting a function left or right works the same way for all of them as it does for the quadratic. If we take the quadratic and in the parentheses we add 2, we know that the parabola shifts to the left 2 units. If we take the square root function and add 2 inside the square root, the square root function will move left 2 units. The square root symbol, the radical, is equivalent to a parenthesis, so when we add 2 on the inside, that means the square root function is shifting to the left 2 units. The same is true for the cubic. If we add 2 in the parenthesis, we will shift our cubic function to the left 2 units. The same is true for the cube root, and the same is true for the absolute value. The process for shifting from function to function is exactly the same. Remember if we want to shift to the right, we will subtract in the parenthesis. Here we have the function y equals x minus 1 all squared. Minus 1 in the parenthesis means that the quadratic function is shifting one unit to the right. You'll see that this holds true in all of the other functions. If I take the square root function and subtract 1 on the inside, my function moves 1 unit to the right. If I do that with the cubic, again, my function moves 1 unit to the right. The same is true for the cube root. If I subtract 1, the parent function moved 1 unit to the right. And we see that the same holds true for the absolute value. We can combine these things, shifting left, right, and up or down at the same time. We've seen that before in the quadratic. In this one, y equals x minus 2 all squared plus 1, our function would move right 2 and up 1 unit. Notice when we follow that same process in the other functions, the behavior is similar. The parent function shifts 2 to the right and 1 up. 
This is everything you need to know to get working with translating functions. Remember, you can learn more about functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook at www.dorypublications.com.